to another 5e environmental systems and societies video. Today's topic is 5.2 terrestrial food production systems. Let's get into it. Terrestrial food production systems are complex and their sustainability depends on a variety of factors. Just like a three-legged stool needs all its legs to stand, sustainable food production requires a balance of social, economic, and environmental considerations. Consumers play a big role in the system through their food choices, which can support or challenge different production methods. Food availability varies greatly around the world. More developed countries, consumers have a wide array of choices in supermarkets. Its abundance stems from differences in wealth, infrastructure like roads and electricity, and government policies. However, this uneven distribution can lead to conflicts, especially as suitable farmland isn't equitably distributed across the world. Many factors influence how sustainable our food production is. These range from the scale of the farming operations to the types of seeds and crops that we choose. For example, big industrial farms might use lots of machinery and fossil fuels, while smaller farms might rely more on manual labor. Water use, fertilizers, and pest control methods all play a part too. Even things like antibiotics and livestock and government regulations can impact sustainability. And a lot of these factors are different between MEDCs, more economically developed countries, and LEDCs, less economically developed countries. There's a stark contrast in how food is produced around the world. While some regions use high-tech industrialized methods, others rely on traditional small-scale farming. This difference isn't just about technology. It reflects bigger inequalities in resources, knowledge, and market access. Those are particularly apparent, again, in those differences between LEDCs and MEDCs. These disparities affect not only how much food is produced, but also who has access to it. Food waste is a global issue, but it looks different depending on where you are. In Vancouver, Canada, for instance, you might see perfectly good food thrown away at markets. In richer countries, we often waste food at home or in restaurants. But in poorer countries, food might spoil before it reaches consumers due to a lack of proper storage, transportation, or a degraded infrastructure network like roads with lots of potholes or which wash away rainy season or bad weather. Addressing food waste requires understanding these different patterns. Our food choices are influenced by more than just hunger. Cultural traditions, economic situations, and even political systems all play a role too. For example, a traditional farming scene might reflect deep-rooted cultural practices. These factors are all interconnected. A change in one area can ripple through the entire food system. As ecologist Barry Commoner said, everything is connected to everything else. The food system is like a complex machine with a bunch of different parts. It starts with producing food on farms and then involves processing, packaging, transporting that food to markets, and along the way, a lot of different factors come into play. Climate change and weather events can affect crop yields, while economic policies might influence food prices. Understanding these connections helps us see how changes in one area can impact the whole system. As our global human population grows, we're facing a squeeze on farm. In 1960, there was about 0.42 hectares of arable land available per person globally. But by the year 2050, that's expected to shrink to just 0.14 hectares per person, or a third of what it previously was. This trend is driven by population growth, but also by urbanization, eating up farmland, and soil degradation, making some land that used to be arable no longer usable. Not all foods are created equal when it comes to land use. Meat production takes up a whopping 77% of global farmland, but provides only 17% of our calories. In contrast, Plant-based foods use only 23% of farmland, but give us globally 83% of all the calories that we consume around the world. This huge difference shows why eating lower on the food chain, more plants, less meat, can be more efficient and sustainable. It also has major implications for climate change, which we study later on in the syllabus. In many cultures, eating meat is seen as a sign of wealth or status, but this cultural preference has a big environmental impact. The more often people eat meat, the more land is needed for farming. For example, if everyone ate meat at every meal, we'd need a lot more farmland than if people ate meat less frequently. This shows how our cultural food choices can have far-reaching consequences. As people get richer, they tend to change their diet. Often, this means eating more meat and other animal products. However, these foods generally have a bigger environmental footprint. Beef, for instance, has a much higher impact on things like greenhouse gas emissions and water use compared to most plant-based foods. There's a big difference between diverse, small-scale farming and large industrial agriculture. Small-scale, diverse farms often grow a bunch of different crops, they use a lot more human labor, and they work 
within natural processes like seasonal rainfall. Industrial farms, on the other hand, might focus on just one or two crops in a big monoculture. They rely heavily on machines and chemicals, and they aim for maximum yield. They're not as susceptible to those seasonal changes because they also generally will have things like large-scale irrigation systems in place. Each of these systems has its pros and its cons in terms of productivity, environmental impact, and the social effects. One way to make our food system more sustainable is to change what we eat. Reducing meat consumption and eating more plant-based foods can make a big difference. Local and organic foods can also help by reducing transportation needs and chemical use. However, it's important to remember that there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Best diet depends on many factors, including individual health needs and local food availability. Food labels can be a powerful tool for sustainability, but only if you know how to read them. These labels can tell us a lot about nutritional content, the ingredients in the food, and sometimes how the food was produced. By making informed choices based on that information, consumers can support more sustainable food systems. Ensuring sustainable food production isn't just up to farmers. It requires oversight and cooperation. Government agencies and international organizations play a big role in setting and enforcing standards. This might involve several different aspects, from soil health and water use to biodiversity or fair label practices. Effective monitoring and control can help make sure that our food is produced in ways that are good for people and for the planet. Buffer zones around farmland can be a simple but effective way to reduce agriculture's environmental impact. These areas of natural vegetation capture excess nutrients and sediment before they can pollute waterways. It's a great example of how we can work with nature to make farming more sustainable. By implementing soil conservation practices like this, we can produce the food we need while also protecting our ecosystems. Crop yields vary greatly around the world and they've changed over time. In the United States, for example, corn yields have increased dramatically since the 1960s thanks to advances in technology and farming practices. However, yields in many developing countries remain much lower. This kind of data helps us understand global food security challenges and imbalances and shows us the potential for improving production in different regions. There are many different ways to produce food, each with its own characteristics. Commercial farming aims to produce food for sale, often focusing on a single crop and using a bunch of technology. Subsistence farming, on the other hand, produces just enough to feed a family. Some farms are intensive, using a lot of labor and resources on a small area, while others are extensive, spreading out over large areas. Understanding these differences helps us evaluate the sustainability of different farming methods. Terrestrial food production can have significant environmental impacts. That includes soil erosion, water pollution from fertilizers, pesticides, habitat loss, and contributions to climate change. The severity of these impacts often depends on the farming methods that are used. By understanding these effects, we can build more sustainable farming practices that produce the food we need while minimizing environmental damage. Food production is deeply connected to social and cultural systems. For example, poor soil health can lead to low crop yields, which then results in food insecurity poverty. This in turn makes it harder for farmers to invest in improving their soil and the cycle continues. Understanding these connections is really important for developing sustainable food systems that not only produce enough food but also support people's well-being. There are many strategies we can use to make food production more sustainable. This includes precision agriculture to use resources more efficiently, integrated pest management to reduce chemical use, and crop rotation to maintain soil health. We can also work on reducing food waste and finding ways to store carbon in agricultural soils. When we combine these approaches, we can build a food system that meets our needs without compromising the planet's health or the ability of future generations to meet their needs. That, by definition, is sustainable agriculture.